What up, YouTube? It's Frisky Dingo getting back with you guys with another reaction slash review video. Always remember to like, subscribe, and comment on this video because we are on a grind. That being said, today's reaction slash review is just me giving my discoursed opinion on uh, Star Trek Discovery and the recent Star Wars trilogy. And something that's just been bothering me overall. Now, I've never been a big, the biggest Star Trek fan. You know, growing up, um, it used to be on the on the TV stations and whatnot, um, sci-fi, you know, pretty much all the famous channels that really hosted um, this show. And I always thought, honestly, it was boring. Besides, like, the obvious uh, Captain Kirk, uh, Leonard McCoy and Spock trio I always never was really into Star Trek up until um well I let's let's be realistic I'm 28 years old so in reality for me Star Trek was never going to be something for my generation to get into I just happened to be into it because I have family members who were sci-fi fans and lived during those eras so um you know, obviously, I was passed down with the, you know, Captain Kirk, um, you know, Shatner, um, Kate Mulgrew, uh, Patrick Stewart. Um, those were kind of still icons when I was growing up in the sense like those people still had an image. Um, but if you can understand, it's more like um, Piers Brosnan version of James Bond. A lot of people in my generation, we weren't born. We were born exactly when these creations came out. So we're just receiving We're we're being raised at pretty much when these people are given their flowers. So um, for me, obviously, I was born in 93. Um, so you can obviously see that uh, when I was a child growing up in the mid 2000s, Kate Mulgrew's uh, um, Star Trek, uh, Star Trek, um, uh, the I think the Next Voyager um, was extremely popular, uh, and before that was Patrick Stewart. And during that era of the 93, 94, we had uh, Deep Space Nine and et cetera, et cetera. So realistically, I didn't grow up with Star Trek. The Star Trek I grew up with, and a lot of people don't like hearing this, is the Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, three movie set trilogy that I grew up with because it came exactly in 2008, right when I was, you know, um, pretty much 18, 19 years old. Uh, so that Star Trek is pretty much the one I'm most familiar with. Now, a lot of people get upset about this, but that's the realization. Someone like me, 28 years old, my Star Trek is the new one era. But yet when you talk to um, you talk to Star Trek fans, they say, well, no, that's for kids. And that was made for X, Y, Z. Well, yeah, you know, it was made for me when I was a kid, you know, a pre a teenager. Um, um, and the same thing with Star Wars, you know, even though I was born in 93, as everyone knows, um, the trilogies, the, the prequels didn't come out until uh, um, mid 90s into late 2000. Uh, I mean, into uh, early 2000s. So that being said, uh, I got to experience the trilogy firsthand in movie theater, um, you know, getting that presence of movie and film. Uh, those were really the first films I got to see, including The Lion King, uh, Little Mermaid, Pocahontas, etc., etc., Toy Story, that entire, um, you know, uh, zenith of, of cre uh, credibility. Um, so, yeah, that being said, uh, it's just, you know, it's just to, to the point that I'm trying to make is that it's just wild how someone like me who is raised with these type of IPs and franchises and people like me aren't allowed to enjoy it. And it's really and crazy how the older generations have basically safeguarded Star Trek and Star Wars into this plateau that does not exist and it's just really crazy to me because i might be young but i have research and information and george lucas and gene roddenberry were very contradictory so it doesn't make sense why star trek and star wars fans hold these these things so dear to them when the people who created themselves not not only were not very consistent with the ip and the in, in the product but they really didn't care for fan ideas and fan premise. And that's why you have 
someone like Re- Gene Roddenberry be, you know, you know, f- not forcefully removed, but you know, he kind of wasn't really allowed to participate in the full development of Star Trek after the after the original series. And then, if you look at the at the um, if you look at Star Wars, it's the same thing. George Lucas sold his franchise at its peak, so. Um, it's just really hard for me to really get into into shows like, for example, right now, Dar- uh, Star Trek Discovery. That's my jam right there. I love Star Trek Discovery. No one could take that away from me. I love the show. I love everything about it. I haven't had a problem with it for a very long time. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, you know, I've watched a lot of old Star Trek episodes. I can see where people get upset that it's a little more, gu- a little bit more gun ho, and it doesn't have that nautical ship sub- submarine vibe. But the real is the realization. The realization is people my age don't. That's boring. You know, um, unfortunately, it's boring. Discovery was awesome. I don't care what anybody says. The first season was the Klingon War. I love the Klingons. You know, ever since I watched Star Trek, I always wanted an all-out Klingon war. You know, get to be able to see that with my own eyes. I've been waiting for that. Then the second season, oh my god, Christopher Pike. I love Christopher Pike. Even though he wasn't in the original series, his whole character arc in the in the movies was my favorite. He literally was that person who taught Kirk how to be Kirk. You know, Kirk was gun ho He wasn't very smart. He was never steadfast, never, you know, picking himself to do the best job. He was always trying to get his team killed. And Pike was the complete opposite. He would put himself above the entire mission. And if he had to die alone, he would do so. And he was the poster boy for, Star- for the Federation. So... I love the Pike story in season three. That was awesome. I don't care what anybody says. And then you have the whole, um, you know, another big thing is in, in Star Trek, you know, um, you know, different identities have been able to prosper. Let's be real. You know, it's always a Caucasian male being a leader or having power in the Federation. You know, we do get the occasional, you know, LeVar Burton or, you know, uh, Deep Space Nine captain. But let's be real. We never seen black people in Star Trek in a capacity of having their own identity that's separate to the Federation. Bro, season two, Quajon, you feel me? Like, who, like, you go to a planet named Quajon, there's a bunch of multi-ethnic people, not only, because, mind you, I'm Afro-Latino, so, you know, I'm black and Hispanic. Now you got a planet with black and Hispanic people and a little bit of white singed. It was beautiful. I enjoyed it. Quajon end up, you know, getting destroyed. But the point was, is that I got to see, like, a, a multiple black people, even to the point I made a joke, um, you know, when, when, um, when, uh... Uh, when Book basically was on Quajon with his friends, who you saw, majority of black people, right? So I made a, I made a, a joke, like, it was so funny to me, because to see that many black people in Star Trek, and all in just one identity, I was like, wow, this is the alliance of uh, black guys in space, because... You know, realistically, we're getting our own people, you know, performing without having to be, you know, connected to that Federation identity. And that's one of the things I love the most about it, Um, you know, because, you know, we do we at at it be uh, the Klingons, uh, the Klingons, the Romulans and the Vulcans have always portrayed multiracial identity. Um, But once again, as we understand being a Klingon or a Romulan is the identity itself, whereas someone like Book, uh, you know, he was, he is from Quajon, so, um, to see the multi f the multi ethnicity of race take place in 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 in, in a storyline, you could tell what they were trying to do. Give people that connection, get that sense of feel. You know, that was one of the things always off putting with the original Star Trek. So, you know, like I said, uh, with Star Trek, with Star Wars. I just want to be able to enjoy these intellectual properties and not have an older fan base hammered down on it and tell me so much of how bad it is. You know, how about we try to move forward? Like I said, Michael Burham, she's not perfect. You know, Daisy Ridley's character, you know, Ray, she's not perfect. But these are good writing stories that are, are, are being put together. And I don't think that we should try to stop it just because you know, we missed the old version of, of Star Wars. Or start, those, that age is done. That era is done. Star Trek will never be the same. Why Star Trek will never be the same? Because time has moved forward. You know, 
um, one of Gene Roddenberry's biggest things with Star Trek was there was no racism, no conflict, none of those extra things that we deal with a day to day basis in society. That era is, you know, that era is pretty much coming to a close. We still have, you know, racial disparity and all these things, but the idea that Star Trek can represent at the time. Star Trek was good for unity because people were not unified. In the 60s, there was still great increase of racism and bias, by, by, uh, bias and um, stigmas and homophobia and all that. So Star Trek served as a way to uplift everyone into that new era. That era is pretty much coming to an end. You know, we have more movements that exist. We have more um, idealizations that exist. Um, so it's not uncommon for people you know gay people to be together and be happy or black people to be together and happy yes there's still disparity but we understand that the timeline has moved forward so we need more introspective uh storylines once again the the situation with michael and her mother you know portraying that black mom black daughter um storyline of you know a black mother do, literally putting the whole universe on her shoulders and then her daughter having to do the same with no one you know as as much of giving them a a, a congratulations or anything like that or you know with with book and quajon and his masculinity and you know him trying to be a better emotional brother or emotional father figure and things like that these storylines mean things tilly and her experience of anxiety and grief and um um deborah uh, uh depravity and all these other things that you know once again like she was a basic earth girl and her mom was like a politician that's it that's all you need right because that's the average that's like a basic life for someone of today and so on and so forth you know and that's what i'm trying to say is that at the end of the day star trek discovery does it good it does it right it does it how i like it for my age and if people don't like that then i don't know what to really say but i love star trek discovery i can't wait for the the the, the captain pike show that's gonna be my ish because when i say i love captain pike like i love captain pike so much i love the original actor who played captain pike in the pilot episode of star trek so that just goes to show you how much i actually love captain pike's character um, don't get me wrong, I always loved Kirk, but Kirk was always, to me, very ignorant, very gung-ho, very not of a, of what a fitting of a Federation captain should be. He's just the alternate because uh, most captains aren't very exciting and most people can't accept that. That's why Captain Kirk is the only version of, and this is the funniest part that kills me, right? Captain Kirk is literally the same thing as Michael. Literally the same exact thing, just the female version. If you look at it, no matter what point of view you look at it, Captain Kirk was not a good, he was not the poster boy for the Federation. He was a good officer, don't get me wrong, but he broke a lot of rules, and Spock did too. Like, Spock broke so many rules. So, this whole thing of, you know, the preservation or, you know, the infinite rule that they're not allowed to interfere with anything or everybody, come on, man. Like, you know, we have to move the storyline forward. New storylines need to be taught and etc etc so hopefully you know people could just you know back off discovery back off star star wars and give them the space they need to create and breathe because as of right now i don't care i love discovery i love the mandalorian i love the trilogy movies that just came out it doesn't bother me i love ray i love kylo ren i love the fact that they brought palpatine back why would i not love that i want first of all i was born before the the original the original sequels why do people not understand when I watched the original sequels, no one told me who Palpatine was. All they said was he was some guy, part the leader of the Empire. And even still so, you don't actually know that until how many parts within the movie. Like, you don't actually know that Palpatine is, like, the actual leader, leader. So, you know, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like people keep on complaining. But ideally, you know, once again, like I said, when it comes down to it, when it comes to the character basis, like... I love, I really love the original Star Wars, but it wasn't explaining a lot. And people with the same criticism for the current Star Wars make no sense at all. The same thing with, with Star Trek. Star Trek was boring back in the day. It didn't really develop outside of the storyline. You can't keep having the same storyline for every single show. 
You know, like every single storyline, of course, uh, you know, Picard is not going to be the same. You know, he been through so much experience. God knows if he knows that every choice he made was correct. And that's the problem. You know, people put the Federation on such a high, high tier that it's like they can't make no mistakes and they can only be arbitrary to the shadow of the cutout that they actually are and not exposed to no change and no difference. I think that's one of the most prolific things because Spock's entire character is based on uh uh logic and change like acknowledging when he's wrong and then doing something he never did before so you know in the in the words of uh shatner but yeah that's pretty much it guys you know i don't want to go on a rant here i love star wars and star trek you know i wasn't really always into the old stuff you know i really just became a fan of it as i got older in my teens um, but for the Star Trek series and the trilogy that just came out, I love both of them. So hopefully we can just get more stuff from it. And fans of the original, please, I love y'all. Of course, y'all, y'all paved the way. But let you know, let our generation enjoy this. Just like how you got to enjoy your stuff when no one coming in and butting in and tell you what to, you know, what 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 is right and wrong with the show. Just let us generation enjoy it so that we can, you know create the revenue for the next generation to enjoy because if you kill this now the next generations aren't going to be able to enjoy it and it's the same thing like you know a little bit of what happened with um with next generation talking about that ironically you know next generation came out and no one gave it a chance so give them give give it just give it just give it but uh yeah if we get into any more star wars or star trek news i will see you guys in the next one